the same time the the, uh, the band started, I got a job as a teacher. The, this didn't last very long. It was just a, a couple of terms up until the summer when I went professional, which meant I was earning four or five pounds. Out of Dr. <laughs> and um, we we spent a couple of years playing locally in in South End and Canvey Island, and we weren't very highly regarded. What we were doing was. Uh, with the kind of stuff I love, you know, the rolling, look, the reference point is the Rolling Stones, I think, and, and uh, uh, that's what we wanted to do. But we weren't, we weren't by no means highly regarded, but we got it together. We, you know, it, we, we all liked the music, and there was some, and the thing was, I know, I, 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 I mean, first of all, it was pretty rough musically, but I know that Lee Brillo was a star. He, he just radiated this guy, and I thought, and that, I started taking it seriously and we're playing. So I thought, this this guy's a star. And all the way through Dr. Feelgood, the stage shows and that, I take my cue from Lee. And people think it's a double act and stuff like that. It's not actually, it's Lee. I, I'm watching Lee all the time, and I well, I'll go, I'll go because Lee says go. You know. Uh, yeah. We, we spent, so we, we'd got this kind of we got we'd got the look of it and and uh, and the kind of music we were doing and then we started playing in London and uh, we quickly made a name because the, the whole thing was there bam it was ideal for those uh, clubs and pubs in London. Another thing that was happening was uh, when we were still working locally we. Uh, we, we got a gig backing this character called Heinz. <laughs> now, Heinz uh, is a singer. Uh, he had a, a hit record in the 60s, right? But he had kind of uh, ended, ended up... With, I think he was selling advertising copy for the Evening Echo or something. So anyway, Lee had answered a, a, an advert in the local shop. And we got this job back in Heinz, which, in, which involved us... Uh, we, we were going to do, do 45 minutes and Will Heinz on... And he would do it, it would just be all Eddie Cop. I mean, he was a, a talent free area, Heinz, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, he, and do his, but the thing was, in, in Teddy Boy Clubs, now, we would get much more money than what we could get on our own account, so it was worth it. And one of the things Heinz got for us was early of that August, this is 1972, he got a place on there, had this thing called the Wembley. Rock and London Rock and Roll Show, and this was a show. They said uh, Chuck Berry, Jerry Lee Lewis, Little Richard, um, Bill Haley, Bo Diddley. It, it was a, a fantastic show, and and Hines got us a place on this show. He got himself a place on this show, right? We all, there was all this kind of English rubbish, that, you know, to try open the show. And I can there were a couple of things I remember from that. He's going. We were in this battered old transit van and we're driving towards Wembley Stadium. You see those towers? I mean, it was really frightening, right? And then the next thing, I'm standing, I'm standing, I was standing on stage thinking, this is ridiculous. I mean, this is idiot Heinz. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I'm thinking, it's Wembley Stadium. It felt good to me, you know. I think I could sort of like do this, you know. Anyway, a bit later on, I'm, I'm, all the dressing rooms are under the stairs, right? And I start, uh, I was strolling out the front, see what's going on. And this band is on, man. And I think, bloody hell. They're obviously Americans. They just got this confidence, right? And they got, this band, they got one, there's a guitar player and, and dressed in black with shades on. And he's golden, like Toot and Carmen. There's, there's, a, there's another guitar player who's silver, like a spaceman. <laughs> and, the, and the singer's got this ridiculous afro. And uh, I, I realised quite quickly it was the MC5. Now, I, I was familiar with their uh, records, which I kind of dug. And, uh, but seeing them, with it, this was fantastic. I'm, I'm looking at this guitar player, this Wayne Kramer. And, he, and the first number, I, I don't know if you're familiar with, they do that ramble in rows. And he sings it in this falsetto voice. He was, they were doing that. As, uh, Love it like the rambling rose! And, he, and, and, he's, and he's suddenly going, whoop, sideways. I thought, gosh, yes! Right? Oh, I took notice of that. And, and uh, anyway, the teddy boys who were, who were at the front, they did not like it, man. You know, when you play teddy boys, you've got to play all Eddie Cochran, you've got to have a DA and a, you know, a drape and everything. They didn't like it. Teddy boys stop throwing cans at them, right? It's getting pretty heavy. And I remember at one point, Wayne Kramer, he's going across the stage. 
and he and he booted this can. He got it right on his toe, and it bounced right back. And he didn't break his stride. And I thought, this this is you know, this guy's a live one. And, and uh, after the sh after they'd come off, I, I went up to him and, and I said, oh man, I've got to tell you, I I, I, it was absolutely great. What, I really really dug what you were doing. And he was uh, you know quite miserable. I was saying he he started saying to me, oh man, I think if if we'd have uh, if we'd have had another 20 or 30 minutes, we could have won. I said, no, you couldn't, man. I said, they're, 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 teddy, bo they're teddy boys. And that's, I started telling him all about teddy. I said, explain to him all about teddy boys. But he was saying, oh, I love this thing. Now then, there is, a, you, there is a DVD you can get of the story of the MC5. Uh, I forgot what it's called, right? But anyway, it's a very good thing. And what it is, it's Wayne Kramer driving around Detroit. And, and, and telling the story, the MC5, and it's, a, it's actually quite, gets quite moving at the end. And there's this bit where he's describing when they came to London, and when they did this show, and they had this bad time at this show, you know, and it really is quite sad. And, uh, and, uh, it, and then, he, then he goes, because they have these things there called teddy boys. And he goes, oh, I told him that! <laughs> and, then, and he did, he gives my exact rap about teddy boys, and I think, man, I've got to get in touch with him and say, Listen, you, that, might, that might have been the end of the world to you, the pits, you know, like having a bad show like that. But it was one guy watching it, and you changed his life. He did. I mean, I took that all on board. He changed my life. Was it, you know, so that's the wild and wacky world of showbiz. <laughs>